In this video, I'm going to show how you calculate the moment of inertia of a cone. And the method is the same for any sort of three-dimensional shape, by and large. In practice, you'd probably just look it up. You can certainly find moments of inertia of cones in many places. But if it was some more complicated shape, you would have to work it out yourself. And it's worth seeing. It's also worth seeing because this sort of three-dimensional integral will come back big time in other areas of physics, in particular in electrostatics, the second part of the course. So, we have a cone. Let's measure the moment of inertia about an axis down the middle of it. Now, if you remember, the moment of inertia is the sum over all parts of the cone of the masses of those little bits, delta m, times r squared, r being how far a given bit is from the axis of rotation. So what we need to do is sum over the whole shape of a cone, which is a bit tricky. The way you solve any problem like this is to break the cone up into bits and work out each of those and then sum over them. Now in this case, notice the integral depends on r squared, so an obvious bit to divide it up into would be a bit of constant r, like a cylinder. So let's try something like that. Let's pick a given cylinder. cylinder and there will be a whole bunch of these cylinders getting smaller as you go further out bigger as you go in so let's start off by working out what the moment of inertia of the cylinder is then we will integrate over all the cylinders from the ones closest to the center to the ones further out now let's put in uh, some variables we'll have the height of the whole thing say big H and the height of our particular cylinder small h, and the radius of the whole thing will have this big r, and the radius of our cylinder will have a small r. What's the thickness of the cylinder? The thickness is delta r. Okay, now the first thing we're going to need to work out is um, the, s the size of the cylinder. Let's have a plan plan, work out mass of cylinder, and to do that we're going to have to work out its volume. We also have to work out the density. So we know the mass of the whole uh, cylinder. We need to work out the volume of cylinder of cone. Divide them by that to get the density. Multiply the volume by the density and we'll have delta m and then r squared. Then integrate over r. Okay, so let's start off with the volume of the cylinder. For this we're going to need to work out H. Um, what is H? We've got a triangle. Well, that's big R. That's big H. Small r small h. What equation could we use? Well this is a line and it's got a slope it goes down h over distance r so it's a line. h has a slope of minus h over r times r. So that's a, the equation of a line that has that negative gradient. When little r is zero 
it's got a value of big H. So that's our equation. It is equivalent to 1 minus little r over big R times H. Is that sensible? Well, it's linear, so it's a straight line, which is good. So we don't want some sort of weirdo curve. When r is equal to big R, it's 1 minus 1. Um, so that gives you 1 minus 1, 0. So that indeed, the height is 0 out here. And when little r is 0, that's just got a value of h. So that seems to work. OK. But now go back to our cylinder. Um, what is the total volume within it? Now, to work out that, we might want to flatten it out. So if we take our cylinder, look at it from on top. and flatten it out. Bear in mind it's very thin because that's a delta R. So it's more like a sheet of paper than a thick cylinder. So we can flatten it out. The length here will be the circumference, which is just 2 pi R. The thickness delta R. And we know the H, so the um, Volume of cylinder equals two pi R delta R H one minus R over R. OK, so it's the volume of our little bit. We now need to know the volume of the whole cone. Let's assume we're given the mass of the whole cone. We should get the volume. Um, so we can divide the mass by the volume to get the density. The mass of this little cylinder will then be this volume times that density. So that's volume of cylinder, volume of the whole cone. It's going to be the integral of that from naught to r. OK, so we take the constants outside the integral. So that's um, 2 pi h, the constants. Do the integral. Straightforward polynomial integral. So integral of r is half r squared. Integral of r squared is one third r cubed. Which, when you simplify it, comes out as. Okay, so that's the volume. The density is therefore um, density rho is m times 3 all over pi hr squared. Check dimensions. We've got a length squared times a length, so 1 over length cubed, mass over length cubed, pi is dimensionless, so that checks on dimensions. OK. You could, of course, um, have looked that up. Um, 
though in some more complicated shape you'd have to work it out yourself, so it's good to know how to do it. Okay, so let's clear some space. So, um, the mass of the cylinder, we've worked, um, the mass of the cylinder is going to be volume of the cylinder, so delta M is going to be the volume of the cylinder, which we worked out before, um, multiplied by the density. So we've got 3M over pi H R squared times 2 pi R h 1 minus r over r delta r so we can cross some things out there so we've got an h a pi so now let's integrate that times r squared. So the, inter the moment of inertia is the integral of this times r squared. So we get that i equals the integral, it's the sum of all the cylinders from naught to r of 6m over r squared r cubed we've got an r squared, r up here, multiplied by the r squared to work out the moment of inertia. 1 minus little r over big R dr. So it's just taking this equation for delta m, multiplying by r squared, and integrating over all the cylinders. So we're at each cylinder, add them all up, and we get that. So that equals 6m over r squared. So the integral of r cubed is r to the 4 over 4. fourth up there, r squared there, so that comes out as r squared overall, over 4, minus 1 over 5, equals 3 over 10 m r squared, which you can look up in is actually correct, check it's got any moment of inertia is going to be a mass times the length squared, so that looks good. Um, so that all looks sensible. The number here is not too outlandish. So we've worked out the moment of inertia of our cone.